Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I have from Amrut Greedy Angels, eight years old. There was a 10 and a 12 year old edition as well, which all came out in June of 2017. Um, this was to commem commemorate the 60th birthday of the chairman of Amrut, that is Neil Yakdal. But I only have the eight year old version. So let's pour this. Um, this is a mixture of unpeated Indian barley, malted barley, as well as peated Scottish barley. Now um, there was one of 1,350 bottles worldwide. And over here in Germany, you can get the bottle for 269 euros. I found a shop in the States, $348, amazing. So it's 50% Amrut, is a mixture of Scottish as well as Indian um, malted barley. It's Amrut, just eight years old basically, right? Amrut is the same thing. It's a mixture of Indian barley as well as peated Scottish barley without a name, uh, without an age statement. Duh. Now this is called Greedy Angels because officially the angels were very greedy with their angel share. Now, um, and the one side I read that um, the average angel share per year here was 12%. Now, 12 times 8 is 96, which means 96% angel share. No, there was not 4% left in that barrel. I guarantee you that. Um, 1,350 bottles, and I read someplace else that the Angels actually had stolen 297 liters. So we just assume to 135,000, um, um, 1, 1,350 times 0 0.7 for over here. So you have about 1,000 liters. Now, if the Angels stole 297 liters on top of that, you basically have an evaporation rate of about 30% over eight years. So we're talking about 4%, maximum 5% per year. That is not greedy angels. Sorry, guys. I like the name, but I don't know if they're really greedy if you still have that much left after that many um, years. Now, I do know that often between 8 and 12% is possible, but I'm not really sure if the angels are really that greedy after 10 or 10, um, 8, 10, or 12 years. So, um, my wonderful nose says, oh, the first thing I get is like a very, very strong port wine influence. Now, the interesting thing, I've done this in German already, and I actually nosed this six different times, and I had received six different aromas. So, let's see what happens now. Now it moves into a honey mixed with espresso and cappuccino. I'm just going to give a little bit more air. See what happens here. Then I get, I get more of a creme brulee. You take the sugar, you kiss it with the flame, and you caramelize that sugar. Interesting. And if you let it set long enough in the glass, you actually get um, like Toberlona. Uh, Toberlona is a Swiss chocolate, and there's little there's little nougat pieces in there. It's a milk chocolate with nougat, and that's what I get. And finally, if I do this one last time, I'm just going to give it a lot of air. I should get, yep, I get my mowed lawn, fresh cut grass with a little bit of that nose of a peat. Just a tiny little hint of that peat in there. But it really is amazing how it changes, transforms, and evolves the longer you give it time in the glass, oh, and especially over such a short period. It was two minutes of nosing it. Yep, towards the end I get that grassy moment with a lot of, like, um, lemongrass with a little hint of that, um, some peated um, scarlet, uh, scarlet, S Scottish barley, uh, Scarlet Johansson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Been watching too much Avengers recently, huh? All right, let's try this. 50%. Mm. 
Now, I received the first knowledge of this bottle at the so-called Bottle Market in Bremen in November of 2017. Julia Nonet, the nose over here, she's worked with many, many different um, spirits producing companies, loved this whiskey. She just adored this whiskey, and I've been trying to get a, a sample for a long time now. Finally got it. Thank you very much, um, Andre. And um, it's a little bit disappointing at first. It's almost bitter. It's, it's almost tart. Um, I had exactly the same problem in my German video, and then I did the following. I diluted it down to about 43%. And then, uh, caramel. It opens up. It's oily. It's creamy. It's a lot of honey, even Turkish honey. Mm. A tiny little bit at the end of that peated um, Scottish barley is there. It does not disturb me. I'm not a big fan of it, but it's just there and it's okay. And yet, that's exactly how it should be um, um, in my personal experience with Whiskey Jason. At that proof, it's exactly right. Take it down to about 86 proof, 43%, um, and you'll just love it. Keep it at the 50%. Nah, not mines. Not something I really like. Not mines. Sounds very German, by the way. Yep. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Much better. It's still just a B to a B, my, B, B plus in my book. It's almost a B plus, but let's stick with the B. Um, it's nice. It's really nice, but not great. Not wow. But nice. Now, there are two factors here. Factor number one, I might not yet be sophisticated enough. I not, might not be experienced enough in my whiskey journey to appreciate the nuances that are going on in this Indian whiskey. Um, I've tried over 700 different whiskeys on my German video sites concentrating mainly on bourbon, Irish, uh, world whiskies, not uh, that much from Scotland. Um, and yet, um, I'm still learning. Second of all, it could be that um, it's not my problem, but actually the problem of the whiskey. That you really do need to add a little bit of water for it to develop, for it to open up, to, for it to become the true monster that it really can be from those greedy angels left over. Um, and there might be other factors involved as well as why I'm not really getting it today. I could have had something for lunch or for dinner that knocked my palate off. Um, might be just my nose that's not up to the up to par today. Even though my nose loves this, the transitions were fantastic. It just doesn't do it for me the way I was expecting it to. And maybe that's also a problem, my expectations. I expected a A-plus whiskey and I got a B. And then it's almost like a C because you expected something much, much better. If it would have been like, oh, no, this is not going to be good. And then you're surprised. It's like, oh, this is great. I'm going to give it an extra bonus point. And sometimes you take away those expected points and you give it a harsher grade than it actually should have. Maybe that's the reason. All right. My question of the day is, what is your favorite Irish whiskey? So I would say my Porto Nova here from Amrut is really, really nice. Um, excellent. Um, Paul John, not edited, not bold, but brilliance. Very, very nice. My best whiskey from India actually was a single cask filled by a German um, producer called Malta Scotland. He actually got his hands on an unpeated um, Paul John. It was, um, I think, three, five, maybe three to five years old. It was heaven. It was heavenly. It was so good. That was my best Indian whiskey, and please watch out for India. They're going to do great things. The biggest whiskey-producing nation of the world. Now, not all of it is considered whiskey in Europe because of the molasses and so on that they use for it, but yet they do know how to make it, and their climate is very um, conducive, um, just like Kentucky is and Texas is, for making quick, excellent whiskeys.
All right, my, my whiskey videos come out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please like, please subscribe, please help others about this crazy American over here in Germany and getting his hands on things you probably never ever see. For example, the eight-year-old Amrut, um, greedy angel, going for $348 in the States, over here, 269 euros. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.